Hey guys, M2 Collector here with another figure review. Next up is the Hasbro Marvel Legends series Spider-Man 60 Amazing Years. It is the 60th anniversary of Spider-Man, of course. And here we have the two-pack uh, from Spider-Man Homecoming of Ned Leeds and Peter Parker. A long time coming for the first MCU Spider-Man movie, uh, but we got some interesting figures here. We don't get very many Peter Parker figures, so it is kind of nice to get an MCU version, which I'm excited. It has one really good head sculpt. It has one really terrible head sculpt. We get a Ned Leeds that looks awesome and he actually has the head sculpt where he put on the Spider-Man mask from Homecoming. So pretty cool. Um, it's pretty decent set, I would say. Um, nothing that's going to be crazy like all oh, must have or anything like that. Unless you're looking for civilian figures, you know, for photography, that sort of thing. Or you love the MCU, you love Spider-Man related characters. This is definitely going to be a good one to pick up. As you can see, I've kind of changed it up from what I normally would do. Is I would show you the package and then take the figures out of the package with the, with the change to the plastic free packaging um, I already did that and took pictures when I posted to Instagram so I already took them out of there so if you're curious at how it looks inside the box I have done some um, plastic free packaging unboxing already you may have seen but I posted pictures on um, Instagram of how it the, the things will come out of the package looking so you can go check it out there um, so let's get the figures out of the way for a bit and we'll take a look at the packaging even still plastic free I get it it sucks if you order online it's not really gonna matter like I ordered mine from dork side uh, toys um, it you know I on sight unseen I can't see it I order it and then I get one whether the paint apps are gonna be good or not I would not know um, but finding in store then you know that would be a change up but here we just get to some 3d uh, digital renders of the figures we see spider-man in the back there spider-man homecoming logo we get some um, artwork for spider-man homecoming on that side we get some digital re renders of the two figures um, on the other side on the back we get some digital renders for everything that is included in the package um, and then a spider-man logo up at the top there no big deal about the box anyway we don't really care about it we care about these figures so let's get in for a closer look and take a look at these accessories for Ned Leeds and Peter Parker Okay, so here's an up-close look at the Ned Leeds figure. This is exactly how he comes out of the package, wrapped in pa paper, of course. Uh, but here is how he comes. That head sculpt looks awesome when he tries on uh, Peter's Spider-Man mask. No web lines on the mask, unfortunately. It is an actual head sculpt, so we're going to pop this off. And then we're going to pop the Ned Leeds head sculpt on there. And that looks really good. It looks like him from his younger self from Spider-Man Homecoming, which is years ago. And that I think came out looking really, really nice. Uh, the shirt, this is all like one rubber piece. So there's not like an overlay shirt with something underneath. That is all one piece. He's got a watch on his uh, right arm and then he's got some denim jeans and they put it in like a dark wash denim like type of thing. It actually looks kind of terrible in hand. I think here in the video, it actually looks decent enough, but you know, they didn't do any on the sides and then didn't do anything on the back. So it's really here in the front. Like I understand what they were doing. I think it was just executed poorly and just really doesn't look that good. Like in hand, you're just looking at like, what the hell? It's just, it's weird. But again, I understand what they were doing. And then he's just got these gray shoes down here. You can see the pants are cuffed, so we actually get some nice paint apps on those cuffs. Not that that really matters, but we get it nonetheless. So there is Ned Leeds. Again, the head sculpt looks awesome. And we do get a backpack from Peter Parker out of the pack. She actually comes with the, with the backpack already on. Uh, but for Ned, he does not come with it on. Um, as you can see, it is a little bit of a larger figure. It wouldn't support the width of the packaging. Uh, but let's see if we can get the, this backpack on him. So you just kind of move these arms back a little bit and you're actually easily able to get this backpack to fit right on his back so that was a lot easier than I actually thought it would be I thought I would have to kind of force it a little bit but no very easy to get on there and that is Ned Leeds now let's take a look at Peter Parker okay so here is the Peter Parker figure and this is awesome but um, he does have this, I mean, he's supposed to look really young because it's the first MCU movie, but he just has like this little doughy eyed look to him, right? The way they painted the eyes, it's all kind of a dark color, but I think it does look really good. This is our best Tom Holland head sculpt, in my opinion. Not that we've gotten a lot. We've had this one, which, eh, I mean, I can kind of see it a little bit, but man, when you look at those two, it looks like... What the hell were they even attempting? And then you have this one here, and it's just like, oh my god, what the hell did they do? Because I just don't, I don't see it. It's not very good. Uh, but anyway, now that I have these two side by side, and it's literally my first time looking at them side by side, uh, this looks like a really tall uh, Peter Parker compared to the Spider-Man figures that we got, because 
That's that's kind of odd. Look how high up them shoulders are compared to a Spider-Man body. But you know, scaling hasn't been Mar Hasbro's best when it comes to things like this. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. We'll take a look at those Spider-Man figures a little bit later on. So one thing about here, Peter Parker's backpack is already on the figure. So to get that off, we'll just kind of pull from the two shoulders to get his backpack off. And then it comes off nice and easily. We get some nice paint apps in there for the zipper pulls. And that's pretty much it. Uh, but Peter Parker, there we go. He actually comes with an additional head sculpt, which I think looks terrible. So we're gonna pop that off. We're gonna pop this head sculpt on here. And this is like a smiling one. Why he was smiling at any point in the movie like this, I don't know. The way the paint app looks, it looks like he's missing a tooth. He's got wrinkles along his side, so it looks like a cracked out version of Tom Holland, Peter Parker. But that might just be me, and it might just be my copy. So I don't really know, but I don't think this looks very good. Like, why did they put so many wrinkles around his eyes? It just, yeah, it, this doesn't work for me. Like, I, I hate looking at this one. So we're gonna pop this off. We're not going to put that one back on because that one just looks really weird um, and really bothers me. Whereas I think this one looks fantastic. We also get a pair of fists for Peter Parker. As you can see, he only has kind of the relaxed open hands there. And he also comes with a book. Mine is a little bit warped. It's just a brown book um, and nothing to it at all. But yeah, Peter Parker. Paint apps look good on his shirt that's underneath this sweater. As you can see, his collar isn't very clean looking and that's kind of... Peter's thing. He's got it untucked right there, sticking out a little bit. And I think that looks really good. Came out nicely. Tan pants, black and white shoes down there at the bottom. Nice looking Peter Parker, in my opinion. But one thing I have to note, and, and Wade, uh, Unparalleled Universe, pointed this out to me, and it's driving me nuts now. The two different greens. So, um, it is a rubber piece here for the lower torso, and this is the hard... ABS plastic so the greens aren't going to match and you could see one looks kind of matte one looks semi-gloss um, And that's because of the different materials I thought it would be something that I would easily overlook and it wouldn't be so noticeable But that is kind of bad. I know a lot of people talk about the iron spider torso how the torso is not the same color red as the arms and legs um, and yeah but it's not that noticeable. This is extremely more noticeable. So while everyone's complaining about this, I'm over here looking at this thinking like, what the hell? But it's pretty nitpicky. Anyway, um, let's take um, another look at the two before we get into articulation. Okay, and here are the three of them. We have MJ, Ned, and Peter Parker. Um, I believe Zendaya is the tallest of the three, and, and maybe I'm wrong on that. Tom Holland's not super tall, but I think Zendaya is pretty tall. Uh, Jacob Bat Batalon, I think is his last name. He He's definitely shortest um, amongst them. And the figures kind of hold up, but I think Peter is a little bit too tall compared to MJ. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the articulation for Ned Leeds first. So with the regular standard head sculpt on, he can look down that much. The head is on a disc hinge, and he can look up that much there. So that is not too bad. You get a full rotation in there, of course. And you get some neck pivot going on in there. I don't know if I mentioned this. There's some browns in there to kind of bring out the texture of the hair, and that looks pretty good. The shoulder, you can get his shoulder to go up and out that much, which looks a little funky when you do it, but basically kind of straight out and it's a little stiff so you want to be careful that about that full rotation of course single jointed elbow with the swivel at the elbow because of how the sleeve is designed uh, so single joint which only gives us eh, about a 90 degree bend uh, there I'm not a big fan of single jointed elbows uh, we get a wrist rotation and wrist hinge there um, legs go out that far apart he can kick forward that much with his left that's not a whole lot he can kick forward that much with his right that's not a whole lot uh, the legs do go back a little bit you have an upper thigh cut in there but when you turn it it the sculpt of the leg ends up looking really really bad uh, but upper thigh cut in there double jointed pinless knee Gives you that much bend there at the knee. Kind of an ugly joint because he's got baggy pants. So that tends to be the case on those knee joints with when they're when they're pretty baggy. Uh, but double joint there. You get a swivel 
at the ankle because there is an ankle ball that's pegged into the leg there. Not the biggest fan of those because a lot of times I end up having difficulties getting getting him to balance and whatnot. Foot hinges down only a slight amount because of the bagginess of the jeans. The cuffed portion there, the foot is going to hit the back of it. Get a little bit of hinge up, but again, not a whole lot because you're hitting the jeans. Ankle pivot, but again, not a whole lot because of the jeans. And then you have peg holes at the bottom of the feet. Now, I did not talk about torso articulation uh, because it is a little tricky. There is a waist swivel. I can't tell if it's a waist swivel, to be honest, or a diaphragm joint. Um, so it's kind of tricky. I want to say diaphragm because you could lean him towards his left that much. And I think you can go to his right a little bit. But then if you want to do anything like... Going back, yeah, it's not really going to happen. You want to do anything coming forward? Yeah, it's not really going to happen because, again, this is all a rubber plastic uh, overlay that is just not going to give any room for any kind of articulation. Okay, so Peter. Peter can move around a decent amount. He can look down that much. He can look up eh, that much. Let's see. Now nah, we can't really work it. So the neck is a separate piece that's actually into this upper torso. So the neck moves around on its own. And then the head is on a dumbbell joint and can move around on its own. So you get a lot of neck pivot and all kinds of wobbliness like that. It's not loose or anything. Full rotation, of course, and then side to side and whatnot. You get the shoulder. You can get it to go straight out like so. Um, up and over, full rotation. Upper bicep swivel. And there, double jointed elbow that is pinless. So that is great. You get that much bend there with the elbow. And that's kind of an ugly ass looking elbow cut. Uh, yeah, it's pretty ugly looking, but you get the double joint there. Wrist swivel and they do hinge. We have a diaphragm cut in here. So he can p Peter can pivot to his left only that much. He can pivot to his right. Eh, only that much, not a whole lot. He can go back a little bit. He can come forward very, very little, as you can see there. And then you get the swivel at that diaphragm joint because there is no waist swivel on this guy. So even though this is a rubber overlay, there is literally nothing up underneath. It's just the same yellow. Uh, really goes all the way up. You uh, have an upper thigh cut in there. You can kick the leg out that far, which is pretty good. Doesn't really go back back to that upper thigh cut. Double jointed knee like so, and that is a pretty ugly ass bend at the knee as well, and they aren't even that baggy. So it's kind of weird that they did went with that big of a knee hinge in there, because that's huge and really, really ugly looking. Not a big fan of that. Uh, ankle, just like the Ned Leeds figure, there's an ankle ball in there, so you get the swivel at that ankle. Foot hinges down slightly, but he hits the pant leg. Up slightly, but he hits the pant leg. Ankle pivot a little bit, but he hits the pant leg, and then peggles at the bottom of the feet. So not bad articulation for Peter. Um, we never really got to see Peter do a whole lot uh, when not in his suit anyway, you know, the biggest thing that we saw, he jumped over a fence when or gate when school was over and he wanted to go to be in a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and fight crime and do all this and that to one day uh, get into the Avengers. And what did they call it? The Stark? Um, man, that's going to drive me crazy. The Stark Scholarship? What did they call it? Stark Foundation? Maybe it's the Stark Foundation. I forgot. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I threw in the Stark Tech suit um, from Homecoming here. And it's just, it's severely undersized when we look at this Peter Parker. So the Peter Parker figure is just a little oversized, a little too tall. Whether the legs are too long, it's just kind of funky. I went back into the movie to look at, you know, where these outfits were from. Because I'm thinking, when the hell did Peter wear this bright or this dark green with these yellow ass pants? And they're more, they should be more of a town pants tan color pants it's when they're at school and he starts tinkering with the little purple glowy thingy i think is what they called it um and then that's when shocker and some other dude like sh they go into the school uh but they were talking in that scene that's where these outfits come came from so um ned Leeds looks really good to how he looked in in those particular scenes the shoes he wore were more like so brown boots as compared to gray shoes it's kind of weird uh but peter actually looks really good compared to those scenes but and looking at spider-man it's just it it really it really 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 throws it off like um the sizing that they did with this peter versus like the spider-man figures is is way off like this is pretty close act almost though although i mean his this torso would be a little bit 
um, a little bit off, but it's just kind of crazy like size wise now when we look at that and, and again Hasbro has not been the greatest when it comes to um, scale so we look at like other Spider-Man figures so here is one of the newer ones this was the upgraded suit uh, the Walmart exclusive version for No Way Home and I can't seem to want to get him to stand at the moment but he sits um, stands a little bit taller than the Stark suit or kind of about the same um, either way, that does not really work out. Um, let's look at the Civil War version, which was screen inaccurate. This was based off of the original suit that was worn in Captain America Civil War that they changed uh, digitally, and that's uh, not quite right. We look at this one, which is basically just a repaint of the upgrade suit. Um, that's definitely not quite right when, in terms of size-wise. Let's look at the Iron Spider suit. Um, definitely undersized and this is supposed to be you know a nanotech like metal suit there so that doesn't really work uh, but then we get to our most recent which is the integrated suit which we will get a new version of when the no way home three pack um, comes out and that again still doesn't work so Peter is just too tall compared to all these spider-man figures that came out for him yeah, even that one's way off because look how much lower those shoulders are. So it's just kind of unfortunate how these all worked out that they're just not quite right size wise. So it throws it off when you would like display your, this Peter Parker next to um, your Spider Man figures because size wise it really doesn't work. It's not believable that this person goes into any of these suits. Now, is that all that important? Probably not because when are you going to have Spider Man and Peter Parker like supposed to be within the same scene or the same moment? You don't. You have either Spider-Man suit or you have Peter Parker. Not really both at the same time, um, but it's just odd that they're way off in size. Okay, and some other last um, size comparisons. Ned Leeds, Peter Parker, Tony Stark, um, Happy Hogan. I think in the movie they really wanted to show a bigger size difference between uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland, which I think they're about the same height, actually. Uh, but they really wanted to show Tony Stark as being much taller than uh, Peter Parker. And again, you don't get a sense for that scale here between the two. But with Happy Hogan, again, maybe. But again, this is a terrible old body that Hasbro has kind of made improvements on newer ones. And yet still do stupid things like using some of those pieces when they're severely undersized. Uh, but here is the um, Spider-Man MCU crew crossover Iron Man characters. Okay, so I'll leave you with my final thoughts on this two-pack. Solid two-pack for any MCU collector, those that collect movie figures, must have. If you're looking for additional civilians and things for figure photography, it's a really good set. Um, but it's it's an unnecessary set. Like, everyone's going crazy. Oh, look, dead leads and everything. And yeah, I need to have it because it's an MCU figure set. Um, but it's not... It's not that I've been asking for a Ned Leeds figure, if that makes sense. It's cool that we have it. I would have been okay if it was something that never was announced, never released. Um, just to show you guys to see about, you know, the new Peter Parker head sculpt on the old Spider-Man bodies. Doesn't really fit. It just kind of rests on there, and it's not going to peg on there or anything like that. So just a heads up on that. But you could fake it in there. But the head looks a little bit big for the body, unfortunately. Uh, but at this set, at, you know, 56 bucks that I paid for it from Dorkside, um, it's it's kind of overpriced. I think retail is $52.99. Like at Target right now, they have tags for $52.99. I don't think, or are they $55.99. I can't even remember, but I think $52.99. But none of the Targets, as far as I know, have received them. I'm sure they will soon, so you'll be able to pick up in-store. Maybe even get on a sale or a clearance. That's probably going to be your best bet if it's something that you're interested in. Or if you have to have them now, uh, Dorkside may still have them um, in stock and available. But I'll have some links in the video description below um, to Amazon, like Entertainment Earth. I'll have some affiliate links. Um, and I'll put a link to Dorkside if it's still in stock so you guys can order it. But uh, decent set, not the greatest. This Tom Holland crackhead head sculpt is no good. The Ned Leeds Spider-Man mask head sculpt is pretty cool, but I'll be displaying them with the Ned Leeds head, the Jacob Battle on one. Um, so I'm happy with it, but at the same time, there wasn't a whole lot to be super excited for. So there was nothing I was going to be disappointed in other than this crackhead head sculpt and the, and the two different color greens that aren't super noticeable, but having it in hand, you'd really see it. It's one of those things. 
Uh, but you guys let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this two-pack? Is it something that you're going to be picking up? What other figures from MCU Spider-Man films would you like to see released? Um, I think a Maria Hill, Nick Fury would be uh, pretty cool to come. Uh, a Mysterio with a Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt would be really nice. Um, but I think we need a Shocker figure from Homecoming. I think uh, we definitely need that. I would like to see that get released. Hopefully one day... Um, that is something that we'll see, but you guys let me know down in the comments below. Um, I have started channel membership, so if you are interested in joining the MCU Collective, hit the join button. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and as always, thank you for watching.